Okay, welcome back. I'm going to make some textured wallets and I'm going to start right here. This is my ShopBot CNC. This is the Vectrix software. I made these images in Illustrator and I bring them into the Vectrix software to create the cut pattern. Just a simple V-bit cutout and that is acrylic. My buddy owns a factory that manufactures doors and he has lots of cutoffs. So that's why later on when you look at that up close, it actually has a linen sandwiched between two layers of acrylic because it's very fancy. But to him, it's garbage. But to me, I'm using it as a print plate or an impression plate for this veg tan leather that I'm going to use, about six ounce veg tan leather. And this is cast acrylic, so it cuts really beautifully. And I'm just going to cut it apart I already have dies made, so in a few minutes you're going to see me cut this pattern. I made this pattern to fit just inside of the dies. If you follow me on my regular channel, you'll notice that I used the stained glass Maker Man pattern. I just force fit it into a square. And then the other pattern is a maze that I just got off of Google Image Search. I just said texture and a maze showed up. And I grabbed it and put it inside a frame, visual frame. And then I stretched it. So now here, this is just veg tan leather and I'm just wetting it. That's how you get a nice impression. But I'm wetting it in a bag. I don't have a tray big enough around and I just stick it in a Ziploc bag and wet it. This is very similar to the journals I made a few months ago on my channel. And now I'm using the Mighty Wonder. I have it clamped and screwed to my table. I have it kind of awkwardly sideways. This way I know I can get a clamp on at least 50% of it. And I'm just pulling down on it. I didn't know what to expect. This is the first time I'm using the Mighty Wonder to make impressions. It occurred to me that there's probably enough force and it worked beautifully. You'll notice I'm moving it around. A lot of people have this misconception that you just stick it under it, pull it once and it works. You got to move it around. You got to spread that impression. Right there you see a little bit of mark from tape that was on the original roll and I cut this one knowing that I will stain it black because that tape lock is going to just transfer through anything else other than black. But you see that impression. Anywhere that the CNC cut away, the leather will push inside of and compress around those images. I'm making another one. I ultimately made four, two of each style. Now this is the maze pattern. And I just wanted to do a generic pattern and then one that was branded for, for my stuff. And the Mighty Wonder has a fixed space. You have a little bit of a range. You can see that hockey puck up on the, the top of the, the big backbone of the machine. Look at how beautiful that is. This works so well. I didn't expect it to work as easily as it did. I expected I'd have to sit on that crank. I mean, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but I thought I would have needed more. And I'm just giving it a couple of bounces. That thing is incredibly strong. But that little hockey puck that's on the top of that back shape, you see I just adjusted it. That will give you a little bit of a range as to where that lever will come down. And so Aaron was just checking up on me there. And there you see I made another Maker Man. And now I'm doing a die cut. I had the folks over at Weaver. It's got an incredible, capable machine shop. You send them a pattern and then they make the die. And this is a wallet die. You can see how my pattern fits directly inside of it with a little border. I made it with the intentions of using the impression line as my stitch line. And this works incredibly well. You just push down on it and the dies come from Weaver. Incredibly sharp and precise. I send Illustrator files. That's what I'm comfortable working in. But I think any kind of file you send, they can get an accurate size of it and just duplicate your file. And that punches the perimeter and the holes for my snaps. I'm going to put brass snaps on these wallets. And you'll notice I, I worked with a piece a little bit larger than I really needed. This is the credit card holder, which ultimately I decided to leave two of them out because I was, I was loving the design on the stained glass man pattern. And now I'm going to die. I started with veg tan, which is a, a great starting point because you can impress it, wet it, mold it, shape it, and then you can dye it any color you want which is a lot of fun. And it gives a really nice, beautiful, saddly kind of finish. Ultimately, this is the black. And I'm just using little cut up pieces of sponge, you'll notice. This leather <coughs> drinks up the, the dye. And at first you get this impression like, oh, that's much darker than I expected it to be. But once it dries, it lightens up. Of course, the black is black and the 
other colors tend to lighten up. That's green. In fact, you'll see how much lighter that becomes by the end of the video. So again, I'm just using a piece of sponge, just like a piece of sea sponge that you would use in a kitchen sink. I cut it up and I grab it with the hemostats and that's how I paint on. And that's the, the, the wall apart. Now this is red and I make a, a great amateur mistake right here. I spill the entire bottle in a second. I may have slowed it down. I can't remember in the edit. But sweep, 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 and then kablooey right here, kablooey. <laughs> Oops. And I took the opportunity to sop up some of the dye with the wallet, with the uh, credit card thing. So I go, oh, might as well get that in there while I can. But it made for a nice even staining. I actually picked it up off camera and poured it most of what was on the surface back into the bottle. I put it there to dry. Now this is about an hour and a half later. You see how much lighter those colors became. Just putting some top coat on there because I'm going to be handling them now. I'm going to basically do everything except for the stitching because I made one of these a couple of weeks ago and I sewed it on the machine before I was able to put the snaps in and I had a very difficult time putting the snaps in when it was already sewn. So in this time I'm going to put the snaps on before I sew it and Aaron and I are going to hand stitch everything. So this is the little wonder and you could get snaps and rivets and splash rivets and the dies are supplied with them. You could buy the dies for them for this. And this is great. I just wanted to also show a production. So let's say you wanted to start an Etsy store. You wanted to start an online store of you making wallets and I'm just showing you how with a little bit of production value here, with a little bit of uh, production help, I should say, with the likes of the machine like this here, this die setter and some dies to make some repetitive shapes. You could do keychains. Recently got Weaver made me a keychain die, which I impressed with a, with a die that I made on my CNC machine. So I, I cut it with the Weaver die and then I impressed my logo into it with a brass die that I made on my CNC machine. And that black really came together beautifully. And now I'm just training the leather a little bit, just forcing it into the shape I ultimately want it to stay. And this was the end of day one, and I let that sit overnight. And then when I came back, uh, this is the next day, I came back and I did some edge coating, edge coated all the parts. And you see how they're kind of staying in that shape. I'm just, again, just training it, just getting the leather used to the idea of being in that shape. And I'm going to burnish the edges. I did an interesting thing with the colors, the red and the green. I put, even with the brown, I have black edge coat. So I put black edge coat on everything. And it gives a nice, it's kind of like seeing somebody wearing eyeliner. It really defines the shape of somebody's wallet. So I put eyeliner on my wallets and it really came out nice. And that's the, the brown. So you could see there the uh, credit card holder. I'm gluing it in place. I didn't expect it to hold because of the top coat, but it held. So I'm just using a little PVA glue, gluing it in place so that later on when I go to stitch it, it's not jumping around. Now this is pretty interesting. I folded the wallet into where I want it to live and I put that one hole all the way through the front and the back and that gives me the location to start my stitching fork from either side. I put 14 holes. I made sure to count down. That's the amount of space that was allowed. So from that, the hole I made with the awl through both sides gave me the starting point so that when I fold the wallet and sew it, the snaps find each other. And now this is just hand stitching. I guess this might be called a saddle stitch. And here's something interesting. I went out the sides at the very end. I went back and forth once or twice. And then I came out the side, tied a knot, and then I tucked that knot inside of the seam. So you never actually see the seam. Tied it tight and it stuck out a little bit. So I melted it back and stuck it back inside there. And now you could see right there. Aaron did something interesting. Aaron was stitching these wallets with me and he did exactly what I just did, but inside the wallet. And it just took a lot more physical wrangling around and wrestling the wallet because you're working inside that confined space. Now, the credit card hole is glued in place. The credit card pouch is glued and it stayed in place. And you'll notice with the calipers, I just etched a little line so that my stitching fork is parallel from the edge. There's Aaron stitching and Aaron is very skilled at leather work so he was a great help and I wanted to hand stitch these because the machine works fantastic 
but hand stitching just has a little bit of a prettier look, especially when you use the stitch fork on the top and bottom of your stitch. Like for instance, like I did on the wallet part, not on the credit card part. Because the credit card part, I was glued in place, you could see. You, no one's gonna be able to see inside of that cavity. And again, just to reinforce that concept, I put that hole through, it gives me a starting point for the stitch fork on the front, and then on the back part of the wallet as well. 14 holes down on the front and 14 holes down on the back. So <clears throat> when you go to stitch them, each one finds each other. Sometimes you need to use a little awl to direct the hole. And here's another little tip when you're using your stitch fork through two pieces of leather. It's hard to pull out without pulling the leather apart. For instance, I want it to stay glued together. And I'm just putting a little pressure as I pull up with the ice pick. And here we are stitching, and then this is just, we just take it home stitching. It's a little, little monotonous to watch, but if you understand how to do it. And then I'm just putting my branding in there. That's a stamp made by the guys called Stamp Yours on Instagram. Great team of brothers that make all these in Cleveland. And now I left the credit card pouch off of these two because I like the pattern. And just interesting places to locate to find the, the logo. And this was great fun. I'm really happy with the success of these. And just to reinforce the shape, I wanted to show you that these are made specifically for a flat pack of dollars or $100 bills. And you could put probably about 50 to 75 $1 bills comfortably inside of there. And there you go. Thank you, Weaver. And thank you for watching. I hope you learned something.